soon. So here it is, the long-awaited Hurricane Hillary. Luckily for most of us in Central Valley, we're spared from the flash flooding and the intense rain that's pummeling Southern California right now. So at the time of, of this recording, we're getting the just the very edge of the uh, the storm. Uh, so it, it's forecasted to just kind of just not make a direct hit to its central California, central valley, and instead it's gonna uh, go kind of a uh, northeastern route. <laughs> But I wanted to talk about, though, stress. <laughs> Believe it or not, trees, tropical fruit trees, they will appreciate some level of stress. I say that because there was a study that was done where this one organization put a bunch of trees in a biodome, we're talking perfect condition, perfect humidity, perfect watering, perfect fertilization. And in the end of it, the trees keep dying. And that is because of the lack of stress. These guys definitely can appreciate and or adapt it to be able to handle stress up to a certain level. So the, the trees that kept dying in this environmentally controlled biodome was because of the lack of wind. Without wind to stress these guys out, they're not gonna be able to structurally support themselves. They, they never learn to adapt and, and grow and thrive in the environment. So in the Central Valley, we've got several factors of stress that, that aren't a big fan uh, to the trees when we're talking crazy intense, in, intense winter time, crazy intense summer time, lack of humidity, lack of water, <laughs> big one, too much water, Another big one, all at once. And oftentimes, the lack of primary pollinators, like, for example, the anonas, the chermoyas, the soursops. We don't have those beetles that's in the native region to pollinate those particular trees, and therefore we have to hand pollinate. And it's rare, but we on occasion do get windy days, which explains why in preparation, I heartened this uh, guy up a bit, just, just in the off chance that, you know, you've got wind that, that's coming this way. Uh, in fact, I, I know you can't see it from this angle, but all the neighbor's trees behind me, uh, there was a, a windstorm that hit uh, th this region right around sometime last year, and there were a number of branches that fell off. And, and that's primarily because those particular trees weren't healthy. They, they were not at all healthy. Because generally, pretty healthy tree, the limbs are quite green, they're very flexible. They will sway with the wind and, and not break like they did over there. And of course, the trees that I'm talking about, for the past, what, three, four, five years now, we, in the Central Valley, in, in basically all of California, has been going through a mega drought. So uh, they've, you know, severely cut the water to the, the trees, and in the long run, it, it, it causes long-term health effects for those trees. But not my trees. And, and that is because, again, the watering practice that, that I have, very little water, but very often, in the front yard and the backyard, 
I mean, these trees, I, get, I water them every single day, which I, I know for the folks that are in the city of Visalia, yeah, it, it's kind of against the city regulation, but this is feeding me. So what I mean by my watering practice, I water these guys every day, Monday to Sunday, 12 times a day, every hour, for in the front, five minutes during the uh, summertime, uh, in the back, three minutes during the summertime. Um, but yeah, no, these guys, so my, my trip to Florida, well, not well, yeah, Florida, Hawaii, uh, and Southeast Asia, Laos, and Thailand specifically, the more tropical region. It's been my experience that they get a lot of rain there, not not like the kind of rain that we get here. Their rain is more natural. Let me let me <laughs> elaborate. When over there. It, it, it rains just about every day. Like for example, when, when I went down to the, the Hana region in, in Maui, it, it rained quite often for five minutes at a time. Same with Laos. When we went down to the, some of the Laotian regions, it, it rained, but it wasn't like consistently day long rain. It was very spotty rain, which is what the trees would appreciate. So, yeah, so stress is something that uh, a tree, once it's established, really will appreciate. And stress is really, in the long run, in the long term, in my opinion, very, very beneficial to the tree if you want them to survive in the long term. In the very beginning, yeah, they're, they're not going to be pretty. They're, they're, they, they may, yeah, they, they may look basically dead if you're trying to uh, get tropical fruit trees to acclimate to your climate. But if you've got, if you're able to um, just help them out just a, just a bit, not a whole lot, but just help them out just a bit. And, and that would be, and I'm not talking uh, protecting them at all during wintertime or summertime. Those, it, it, it's, it's my experience that uh, the, the less I protect these trees, the more resilient they eventually become. It's just been my experience. So what, what I'm referring to is you've got to, number one, water your trees. I know there's a big practice with deep, thorough watering, but that's something I don't do. Uh, you, you, you know, your results may differ than mine. Um, I know folks have had great success with it, but it, it's just not natural in their environment. These guys don't go to long periods of droughts, and then once a week, it gets a lot of water. It doesn't really, that's just not what these guys are evolved to live in. So, yeah, you've got to practice your watering schedule nicely. Uh, fertilize them when uh, able to uh, and in my case I, I, I fertilize them you know three times a year as well as uh, foliar feeding uh, basically every month now and the soil <laughs> big emphasis on the soil okay I don't know about your situation but in Central Valley in my situation I, I have clay soil not the best when it comes to the growing tropicals. The problem with clay soil is it is extremely compact. It doesn't drain well at all. And trees, most trees, don't like their feet to be wet. They don't want the roots to be sitting in, in water. Um, papaya is notorious for it. Mangoes, notorious for it. Star fruits. It's basically a death sentence when these guys are sitting in, in standing water for a long time. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of negatives with our clay soil. So the, the pH of clay soil is also not the best. You're talking 8 plus 
on the scale, yeah. And most tropical fruit trees prefer these pH to be right around between five and a half to six and a half. So it's, uh, yeah. So just as a guideline, the way the, the soil pH works is between, let's say level six, and we've got level of eight, okay? You would think it's just two, uh, you know, it's just two factor. But no, it's actually 100 times more alkaline than what these trees would like. Yeah, between six and eight, that's 100 times more alkaline. So you've got to find a way to bring down your soil pH. And in my case, there's a couple of techniques that I use. Uh, number one, when putting these guys in the ground, heavily, heavily amending the soil. Number two, heavily, heavily putting a, a good amount of uh, wood chip. In my case, if you look at the the height of my makeshift perimeter here, this is the ground level, and this is all wood chip. After years and years of accumulated wood chip, this eventually becomes just super nutritious, breathable, arable, nutrient rich soil for the trees. And that's how you are seeing them so nice. Yeah, even in this low section, I mean, not a whole lot of wood chip, but just enough to um, break down and become good soil for the trees. And of course, I mean, <laughs> during the amending process, I, I also incorporate a, a number or a good amount of elemental sulfur, which slowly over time helps to acidify the um, soil just a bit. So yeah, I mean, my, my practice, unlike some of you, I really don't protect my tropicals wintertime and summertime uh from the elements i really just leave them to their own devices just because it, it's been my experience that they they yes they, they 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 suffer in the short term you're talking maybe a year two years but in long term after that once they are able to make it they are so much stronger i mean the if you come here check it out Brand new growth, okay? Not the prettiest looking thing in the world. This particular batch of growth came when we had that heat wave uh, a month back. So it's not gonna look pretty. However, the next set of growth, as we're cooling down now, the next set of growth is gonna look awesome. And the tree knows that there's, there's some internal record keeping <laughs> mechanism that, that's happening with the trees where they, 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 they know, these guys know uh, what type of um, leaves to push out during certain times of the year, just because, I mean, all of my trees have been in the ground for several years now. So, I mean, that's literally the definition of uh, uh, adapting to the climate. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. so again, yeah, I mean, I, I don't protect them in wintertime. I, I leave them to their own devices. Uh, I don't protect them in, in the summertime besides maybe increasing my water. Uh, that, that, in my opinion, has been sufficient enough to keep these guys hydrated while cooling themselves down. That said, the only, really, the only form of protection that, that I give these guys or just structural support and notice the way that i support my trees or do the use of ropes i've just been a big fan of ropes i don't have any um any long stakes or any wood that's supporting the uh the the tree itself instead i've got ropes tying all the branches um to the poles. The reason for that is it, it allows the tree to fight gravity. It allows the tree to straighten themselves out. 
while still getting used to the the gravitational pull of the Earth. And in, in theory, it, it makes these guys basically anchor the roots crazy deep into the ground and, and spread the roots wide, therefore giving them a good foundation uh, at the ground level. So that's really the only protection that I, that I give them is just structural support when I feel that they need it. So, yeah, I mean, so far, I know my practice is maybe a bit unusual when compared to what maybe you have learned. But, I mean, this works for me in my climate. So, let me show you one thing. Going back to um, soil, which is really a big, big one. It is so important that you build up your soil, which unfortunately doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes years and years of um, soil building, and you're going to need the assistance of worms, insects, and other microorganisms. Check it out. This section of my yard, this, this actually was one of the very first uh, portions of my areas of my yard that I've experimented with growing the tropicals here. After years and years of applying wood chip, this is how good of a soil I've, I'm able to get my uh, dirt down to now. You would think this is dirt, but no. This is broken down wood chip. Yeah. Broken down wood chip equals nutrient for the trees so much so that the seeds that uh from the fruits that we eat toss in here they automatically start growing look these are all volunteers chelmoya chelmoya rambutan <laughs> yeah it's like this is all volunteer this is like my little treatment station i guess uh, you know, we just like to sit here, eat fruits, and toss them here, and then that's what happens. And in turn, over years and years of the soil being built by the microorganism uh, organisms and the insects, this is what you can expect. Yeah, these guys at this point have no problem existing in my yard, and that's because of the soil also known as their home now. I mean, that, that's where all the roots are uh, in the ground, uh, just, you know, sucking up all the nutrient. That's how you're able to get all these here with practically no protection at all. So, yeah, that's really it. I mean, just stress your trees, but at the same time, help them when 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 you see that they they need help <laughs> and this really just you only know it from experience i mean we as human beings uh we, we actually intentionally stress ourselves out in the form of a workout so especially when you do strength training you're, you're literally stressing out your muscle uh, causing microscopic tears in your muscle and during your REM sleep, your body magically <laughs> fixes itself, adds more muscle to it, and that's how you build muscle. You're literally stressing yourself physically, and in the long term, mentally, you're de-stressing yourself through the form of exercise. So that's what I'm trying to do with the trees. I'm, I'm stressing them out, but in the long run, I know these guys are gonna do phenomenally well here. And uh, I mean, so far, I, I think I'm, I, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> so anyhow, all right, have a good afternoon.